Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we're making kumiko. This is a lot of fun. A traditional Japanese method of woodworking and it is, it's enjoyable. Um, now I'm not gonna be doing it exactly Japanese. I'm gonna be trying out a bunch of different things and showing different ways of doing it because there is no one way to skin a cat and it is fun all the way along. So let's dive in and take a look at this. Kumiko. Yes, this is going to be fun. So what I'm going to be doing here is laying out how big this square is going to be. So in my case, it's going to be 8 inches by 8 inches. So I'm cutting the boards to 8 inches long. We're going to make out of this is going to turn into all of the cross hatching. And uh, for that, I actually need 10 pieces that will go at 90 degrees to each other. So we need 10 pieces that are eight inches long. So we're going to cut them at eight inches and then uh, uh, shoot them down so that they're exactly what I want. But out of each of these blocks, I'm going to be able to pull five or six strips. So I need at least two blocks um, set up to, to make this cut. But I want to make them a little bit thinner. Uh, right now they're at three quarter inch and I want them to fit into my, into my, yeah, my sure. jig that I made, which is about five eighths of an inch. And so we need to plane them down to thickness until they fit into the slot because the current thickness of this will be the height of the Kumiko pieces. So yeah, we need to work on that. So I'm gonna glue together, uh, I'm gonna tape together two of these. I, you could see I, I taped together three, but I went back and, and took it down to just two because I only need um, 10 cross hatching pieces. So we're going to tape them out. I'm gonna lay out where the cross hatch will be. One will be right in the middle and then two on either side. And so we can measure and lay out those so that they are all equal. It doesn't matter that they are precisely equal because as long as we keep these all together and we cut them all out of the same block at the same time, they will all match up. Um, but making them exactly equal just makes all of the joinery just a little bit nicer. Now I'm going to be playing with the, the Joint Maker Pro. I did a, a video on this uh, not too long ago. It's, it's really, really, really good for this type of thing where you need to do cross cuts. It is not good for ripping. But for cross cuts and you want to do things accurately, this is this is great. It allows me to go to an exact depth on each cut, uh, and it goes pretty quickly. So I can just set the stop up on it, slide it over against the stop, and then cut it like a table saw. Each time I go through, I progress the saw blade a little bit far farther, and uh, we can cut down the slots. So I'm going to be cutting five slots along this, and they are the thickness that I want to get the strips down to eventually. Um, uh, to, uh, to cut through the, the tape on here. I can't find my masking tape anywhere. Uh, but on some of these, I found that, actually, I'm just going to try doing it with the, the saw and, and showing both different ways. If I wanted to do it with the saw, then you just bring it over here and, and shoot it out. We need to remove all the, the, the chips in between these two, and it's pretty easy to then come in with an eighth-inch chisel and clean them out. If I had an eighth-inch router plane, I might use that, but with the chisel, it actually goes pretty quickly. So now we need to cut these down into strips. And you need to be very, very careful with this cut because these, at this point, are delicate pieces. And uh, whenever you're cutting thin stock delicately, um, smaller and slower is better. And so I'm going to show two different ways. Here's the, the Western way in the, uh, in the, the, the bench. And yeah, this, this takes a little more skill. This is a little harder, but it is far more delicate. This is a far easier way, so you're, there's less chance of messing up. Um, this actually goes with the grain, and so you're getting a, a, much, uh, a much stronger piece of wood here, so there's less chance of breaking it down. So we can cut off one piece on either side, and then smooth it out, mark off two more, and cut it again. But then you start getting down to really thin pieces and it becomes hard to hold them on the bench hook there. So let's try the Japanese method. And this is to do it with the, uh, uh, with the Ryobi saw. And this actually goes really, really well, but you have to be careful because these are thin sticks. If you pull too hard, put too much force on it, you will break it. So go slow and go easy and cut it down. And so I can take the, uh, the four out of the middle with this. And so you just progress a little ways, then flip the whole thing around and come from the other side until you get all of your sticks coming through. Try and make the lines match up and, uh, and split out. And so you can see, yeah, I missed the line on that one a little bit. That's okay. These are a good bit thicker than they need to be, and we're going to plane them back down to what they need. And as always, be careful. But this is one of the places where a, a Japanese-style saw really shines, is being able to, to cut these down. It's a little more of a delicate saw, and as long as you're careful, it actually goes really quickly. Um, for thin pieces like this, that, that's very useful.
So now we need to rip these down or plane these down to the exact thickness so that they mesh in. We want them to slide into the slots we cut earlier so we have a nice clean fit between them. And I want them to be tight so they hold themselves together. I found that a couple of these slots I actually cut were slightly too small. And it's better too small than too big. Um, but I need to come back and widen them out a little bit. The easiest way to do that is line them all up, clamp them together, and then just tap them down with a chisel and you make it a little bit wider. And I widened out two of the grooves and I should have widened out three, which you'll see a little later. I just thought that third one was close enough that it would still be tight. So we're just going to line them all up exactly the way they were before. You can edge them out with a straight edge to make sure that they're all in perfect alignment. Then come into the chisel and chop down to make it just a little bit wider. Just like a, a 32nd of an inch. It wasn't much at all. Now I'm going to actually use my Bridge City plane, uh, this is the, the mini plane, to come in and smooth these down to the exact thickness. And it has the adjusters on the side so I can set it up to bring them all down into the exact same thickness. And for this, it's incredibly useful. It's a lot easier than marking with a marking gauge and running in. And so we can start putting them together. Put them all across the centerpiece, flip it over, and then you can fit them in. And you want them to be nice and snug, but not so tight that they bust out the pieces. And I made a few of these a little bit too tight, and some of them were right on the money. Um, but then the last one that I put in was oop, too tight. I ended up busting out three of these pieces just because it was too tight. <laughs> and rather than stopping and trimming them, I, I broke off the pieces. So stop, trim them, and then put them back in. And you can glue them in place. Uh, in this case, I ended up trying to glue them all on the wrong ones just because I wanted to annoy a few people out there. So yes, look at them. Each piece is on the wrong spot. So it looks really annoying, <laughs> but, but still fun. Now we need to do the whole thing over again for all of the cross hatching that goes in between these squares. So that last piece that we had, we are going to rip it down. And I needed to do a couple more pieces of this. And these, it doesn't really matter what length they are. They just need to be um, the appropriate width. And so I'm, oops, yeah. Um, that's when you get a little overzealous and you start going to town on it. Um, I, yeah. That's where problems come out. But you can clamp it back together, fix your cut, and keep on going. And the nice thing is because most of these pieces are really, really small, that small piece that broke off is still usable. Uh, I just need to be careful where, where it comes from. A lot of these pieces are only going to be three-quarter inch long, so having little pieces is perfectly fine. Now we need to bring these back over and thickness them all down with the, uh, the Bridge City uh, block plane, and we can start using them. Now we're going to mark them a little bit longer than they need to be and set it in place. And I want four sticks to go from corner to corner, um, spraying out from the middle. And we can come over to the jig that we made last week and we can cut a 45 degree on one end. And on the other end, we're going to cut it at 45 degrees to that mark we made. And uh, that will be our first guess. And then we can come back and adjust it. The stop that goes in the jig will then allow you to specifically measure that stop, uh, the, the length every time, so it slides down all of these pieces that can then be the exact same length. And we want them to fit down in with a little bit of a tightness. They don't have to be perfect yet because there's going to be a lot more, um, but you want them to, to wiggle down in there. Um, and every now and then um, something moves or the jig comes out and, oops, I cut that one short. I actually moved it in the jig, um, and so I need to make another one. So we're going to mark it and then cut it down. So once we get all of these going from the center out, we need to start working on all the other ones. These are all easy because they're 45 degrees on both ends and they just go from corner to corner. Now we need to do some splay ends. And so we're going to use one that has a 20 degree end on one end. And it's 20 degrees both sides. And this will go into the tight corners. And then it needs to meet in the middle with a 67 and a half degree. And so here's the 67 and a half degree. And this is going to be the, the, the tight one. And these actually just need to touch right in the middle. And this one, I cut them too short, and you can see there's a bit of a gap on the backside, so I need to make them a little bit longer. Uh, so I moved the stop down a little bit farther and cut another one. Now with these ones, you need to make 16 of them, and that is a decent amount of time. But as long as the stop is in there, they, they go pretty quickly. And so I cut um, a, tw a 22 and a half degree angle on a bunch of sticks. And then I can come back and put in the 67 and a half degree angle. You can see how the 22s fit into the corner, and the 67s just touch. And there is 16 of these done. 
Now we need to make the little piece that goes from the other corner back to those. And that is a simple one because it's just 45 to 45. And so we can fit those in. Now with this, it's the exact same thing again, just mark it to length, find one that fits somewhat close, and adjust the stop to, to match it. Um, I'm going to leave a, a couple of videos, uh, links down in the description bo below that go into far more detail on this, on, on people that are, are, are more accomplished at this task. But at this point, you, you're going to find that these don't all match up. With the other ones, you can cut them all to the same size, but in these ones, you need to be careful because some of them are too tight and some of them are too small. And so I'm doing all of them at one size, and then I'll bump the stop a little bit and then do all of them in a slightly longer size. And you just go around and you make each of these to fit. Uh, there will be eight of them total. And uh, take your time and make each one fit its individual spot because by this point you have compounding errors that start to, to show up. And one piece will fit in one slot and be a really nice tight fit, but you put it over in the other one and it is sloppy and loose. And so you got to kind of play with it and go around one by one until you get them all to fit down in. And this is, this is an incredibly satisfying um, point when they start to get in there and everything starts to come together. Yeah, this is a lot of fun at this point. It is a lot of little fiddly work, but it is an incredibly rewarding fiddly work. Um, just take your time, be patient, maybe do it over a couple days, relax, um, put the piece, check it, take it back, trim it a little lower, and take your time on it. And eventually, the last piece pops in, and it is very, very rewarding. And there are hundreds of different designs and patterns that you can go with. This is one of the most common ones. It's relatively easy with just the three angles, and it is a lot of fun to put together. And just like that, you have one panel of Kumiko. You can use it wherever you want and have a lot of fun. Um, whether you're just experimenting and playing with it, this is an incredibly enjoyable um, technique to play with and something that is, is well worth the time to learn. So, yes, happiness. So there you go. Kumiko. Uh, yes, this is fun. I'm, I've made this in the past, but with power tools. This is the first time I actually got the chance to do it with hand tools. And I may have to work this into a project because this is... Uh, this is a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, there's some interesting things to this. So stay tuned. We might see this in the future. Um, if you'd like to see how to make the Kumiko jig, I did a video on that last week. I'll leave a link to that down below as well, um, so you can check out that. This is kind of one of those necessary things if you want to do this with hand tools. Yeah, you can try and freehand it, uh, but this is a quick and easy jig to make up, and it makes this a lot easier. So definitely take a look at that. If you do have any questions or ideas, comments, snide remarks, thoughts, let me know those down below. I do read through all the comments, and I try to answer as many as I possibly can. So let me know that down below. And also, I want to say a huge thank you to all the patrons on Patreon, members here on the channel, everyone who's clicked that little join button. Thank you for that. Without that, this channel wouldn't be here. <laughs> so thank you. Also, I do want to say we do have special things that go for patrons and members, um, as well as a private channel on the Discord server. Uh, thank you for all of that. If you do ever meet anyone scrolling on the side, tell them thank you. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Sometimes when you back yourself into a corner, you just have to come at it from a different angle.